It's going to be a tremendous stadium atmosphere here. High excitement here at the swimming pool. Queensland in the 80s and 90s was a breeding ground for a new generation of Olympic swimming stars. And Shane Lewis was one of Australia's brightest young hopes. Just leading at the moment, Shane Lewis now starting to move. A national champion with the world at his feet. Shane, that's a very good swim. That's your best time, isn't it? Or what, two 100s off? Yeah, um, it feels like a really good first 50 of, of 100 metres. While still in his teens, Shane Lewis broke into the 1992 Olympic team alongside some of the biggest names in the sport to represent Australia in Barcelona. Such anticipation and high hopes for this team. I think when you're on the world stage, everything is rosy and everything is great. There's a lot of masking. Deep down, they're crying inside, they're dying inside from things that have happened to them. Olympic and Commonwealth medalist Lisa Curry was in the Australian swimming team with Shane Lewis. At the time, she was Australia's darling of the pool. Lisa Curry, five strokes to go, look at the time. And the champion goes in to bring home another gold medal for Australia. I've been in the public eye for nearly 40 years. And I think that this is probably the most important interview that I have ever done. because it's about time that people stop hurting kids. You've got to stop hurting these children that grow up with this pain and this trauma and this shame. Lisa Curry trained with Shane Lewis at Brisbane's Leander Club. Well, I knew Shane when he was in his teens and he was always the joker, he was a good guy, he was funny and a hard worker. You know, lots of good memories from, from those days. But, you know, once everyone leaves the pool, you don't know what goes on. Despite his success in the pool, after retiring, he battled depression and twice tried to take his own life. In his 40s, he told his mother his coach sexually assaulted him from the age of 11 to 13. He also confided in close friends and family. How do they wake up each morning and try and be the best person that they can be when they've got all this shit just layered on top of them? I don't know how they do it. And clearly, Shane couldn't do it anymore. In 2016, encouraged by a friend, Shane Lewis approached Swimming Australia, alleging that former national junior swim coach John Wright had behaved inappropriately towards him and other children. Wright trained elite young swimmers at Brisbane's Chandler Pool in the 1980s. Shane was a beautiful person, a really lovely human being who was just struggling with what had happened to him and he just couldn't get it out of, his, out of his head. It just consumed everything he did. Shane asked child protection advocate Hetty Johnston from Bravehearts for help. He told me that he had been sexually assaulted by John Wright and that he wanted to do something about it. He wanted his experience to mean something for other children and, you know, so that it never happened again. And he reached out to Swimming Australia as the vehicle for that, given that they are a, a big and powerful organisation. And uh, he, felt, he felt let down by Swimming Australia. Swimming Australia wrote back, encouraging Shane to go to the police and to complete a short questionnaire about the nature of the alleged abuse and when and where it happened. Shane wrote back, with respect, I don't believe that filling out a few boxes with high-level information will yield significant interest, nor is it possibly the best way to kickstart anything. It's just my opinion. It's not just swimming, not just sport in general. Abuse doesn't discriminate between demographics. There are too many people out there who have and are still suffering. He received a letter from Swimming Australia CEO, Mark Anderson, to say he would welcome the opportunity to hear more from Shane about, quote, past and present circumstances. Swimming Australia wrote a lovely letter, but the word sorry didn't appear in it anywhere. And what a survivor always looks for is that, 
Everyone wants to know deep in your soul that what happened is not your fault. Hetty says Shane gave up on pursuing the complaint. In February this year, Shane died unexpectedly. The coroner has yet to determine the cause of death, but his family believe it was suicide. I keep thinking about how he's never going to get to meet his grandchildren. He's never going to get to see my brother graduate high school. Um, and it kind of, it still doesn't feel real. Michaela Lewis is Shane's daughter. She believes Swimming Australia failed her dad. When he complained, I feel like if the correct actions were taken, then I would have known about it. But we didn't find out about any of this until after dad had passed. So, like, what was done? Um, I'm incredibly sorry that she feels that way. Um, and this is why we urge people when they come forward to please provide us with, with details so that we can assist you to bringing these people to account. Eugenie Buckley is the acting CEO of Swimming Australia. She says at the time, the organisation did not have enough information nor the resources to investigate. In terms of an investigation, that's not our expertise. We're not investigators. At the time, one, there was nothing to investigate because there was no details, and B, I would suggest we probably weren't the experts in that space to be conducting allegations into historical child sexual abuse. When Shane Lewis died in February this year, Lisa Curry went looking for answers. I needed to know what had happened to him and why. And so I messaged one of my friends, Angie, and I asked her what had happened. And then she told me more about the, the group of boys. Angie is Angie Simpson, another former swimmer who trained with Shane Lewis. The two women were so concerned by what they'd heard, they went to Queensland Police. Police are urging anyone with allegations to come forward. We've spoken to two former elite swimmers who allege they were also abused by Wright at the Chandler Pool in the 1980s. Until now, they thought he was dead. Now they know he's alive, they want justice. They're off and swimming. Looks like Colin's putting on a bit of a burst here, Paul. That's right, he's a sprinter, but he's, he's staying very well in this race. And there he is, he's looking across, he's seeing that he's catching him and he's caught him. National he's junior backstroke him. champion Colin Marshall trained alongside Shane Lewis at Chandler. And there's the winner, the men's open 200 backstroke, Colin Marshall. And he looks pretty happy about that. There was times when John Wright was like your big brother or your mentor or a close pal. And then there was other days where he would be, you know, off his tree mad and, and aggressive and with a lot of verbal abuse across the board for, for, for anyone in the squad um, and um, he, he could or he could flash between the two in any one given session. Colin alleges Wright started sexually abusing him when he was 12 years old. He'd initially ask for cuddles and then he you know he'd, he'd want to be kissed and then he often asked you know very inappropriate questions about your masturbation and all that sort of stuff. And then often, you know, the, would go then to touch you, you know, on, in the areas that you're not supposed to be touched. It started generally at the pool. He would use the excuse that he was gonna weigh you on the scales, which were in a room behind one of the major stands at Chandler, and would grab you by the testicles and, and push them upwards uh, you know, lightening your weight and making out that that was a bit of a, you know, a funny thing to do. Um, you know, and then it'd be, oh, come on, give us a cuddle. And that was the, the beginning of things. Um, and then sort of progressions from there. John Wright had a large house in the suburb of Carindale, where a number of junior swimmers lived with him. He'd host regular movie nights for the boys. Sometimes you might get there and it's, John was just there alone and potentially that would be a time where something might happen like that or, um, you know, or even while you were there and he would say, oh, I need to, you know, see you in my room for a ticket or something like that and take you away from the rest of the group. 
Colin Marshall alleges he was forced to leave the club after Wright violently assaulted him at the pool. And I, I think I got to a point where I, I'd sort of had enough and, and my protest, so I did one lap and didn't move until literally the end of the session. So I eventually swam to the end, got out, went to get my bag and, and he sort of came from left field. I'm just in my togs and threw me into the gear room. And all I can remember then was his hands around my throat and me sort of pinned against the wall. Um, and, you know, look, I mean, my recollection is that he was probably enraged enough to kill me at that point. You know, I certainly was beat, my air was being cut off. The memory of that particular event, though, is, is one of the clearest of my childhood. In 2016, he heard Shane Lewis was struggling with his mental health and the pair shared their stories. I was as open as I have been with you about, you know, the going down, getting weighed and, you know, like the way he asked you to do certain things when he was um, you know, molesting you. And, you know, Shane had experienced very similar things. They were not the only ones. Toby Blundell alleges Wright abused him during car trips to the Chandler Pool when he was 13 years old. My personal experience was just inappropriate touching. I mean, you know, trying to, sitting in the, the front seat of a, a car with a bench seat. He'd ask you to move closer or, or lean over and, and touch you and say he's changing gears and things like that. I knew that it wasn't right. It felt certainly uncomfortable and I guess in a way I was scared. It got to the point where I, I guess, did everything I could to avoid getting in a vehicle with him or, or going around to the house after that, but, but yeah, it certainly wasn't pleasant. Toby Blundell says he decided to speak out after hearing that Shane Lewis had died. It brought this back to the surface, I think, and knowing that, it certainly gave me a bit of incentive and drive to, to pursue this a bit harder as well, you know, for the justice of everyone that he's affected. I want to see him held accountable, no matter what, how old he is now, you know, it, there's, it can't go on. In 1985, around the time the young swimmers alleged they were abused by Wright, one parent did complain to swimming authorities. Cindy Wee, the daughter of the then Prime Minister of Singapore, Wright was coaching her daughter, Su Lin Ching. According to court documents, Mrs Wee wrote letters to swimming authorities about Wright's, quote, vulgar behaviour. When Wright found out, he assaulted Mrs Wee at the Chandler Pool. He first verbally abused Mrs Wee, calling her a, quote, Malaysian bitch before chasing her down. The court heard he gripped Mrs Wee with both hands and shook her against a concrete wall and then against the floor. He was charged and convicted of assault and placed on an 18-month good behaviour bond. Hi. Hi. I'm just here to speak to John Wright. Oh, uh, he's not here. Okay. This is John Wright's last known address, a quiet cul-de-sac near Newcastle. His housemate tells us he left suddenly in March or April, bound for Queensland or possibly Western Australia. I right, packed up overnight type thing. He's gone. Lisa Curry is angry that Swimming Australia didn't do more to investigate John Wright when Shane Lewis complained in 2016. Well, of course more could have been done to help them. They went to authorities, I think, back in 2016 and nothing happened. Why? <laughs> Why does nothing happen? Like, this is serious. The, the, these kids who are now grown men, they don't make this shit up. Like, they have, they have lived with this. I've been on the phone to Kieran Perkins, who is now the president of Australian Swimming, and I have given him a heads up that this story is going to come out. And I said, unlike people in the past, Australian Swimming now will not be able to sweep this under the carpet. In terms of being swept under the carpet, I mean, that's, that's just not true. We've reached out to, to him, we reached out the allegations, police, Braveheart, gave it all to the Royal Commission, 
Um, so, so lots was undertaken at the time, but I certainly understand anger from, from Lisa. Ms Buckley said if they'd received the same complaint now, they'd refer it to police and Sports Integrity Australia for independent investigation. I think they should understand that sport is not just about winning. There's so many other things that are involved. There's mental health, there's incidents behind the scenes, there's things that go on in people's home lives that they probably aren't aware of. And that is impacting the athletes greatly. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.